No such matter, sir. I do live by the church, for I do live in my house, and my house doth stand by the church. <laughs> so thou mayst say, the king lies by a beggar if a beggar dwell near him, or the church stands by thy tabor if thy tabor stand by the church. <laughs> you have said, sir, to see this age, a sentence is but a kid skin glove to a good wit, how quickly the wrong side may be turned outward. Truly say that's certain. They that dally nicely with words may quickly make them wanton. I would, therefore, my sister had had no name, sir. Why, ma'am? Why, sir, her name's a word, and to dally with that word might make my sister wanton. <laughs> Art not thou the Lady Olivia's fool? No, indeed, sir. The Lady Olivia has no folly. She will keep no fool, sir, till she be married. <laughs> like husbands as sardines are to herrings. The husband's the bigger. I am indeed not her fool, but her corrupter of work. I saw thee, Lady, the Duke Orsino's. Foolery, sir, does walk about the orb like the sun. It shines everywhere. Oh, there's expenses for thee. Now, Jove, in his next commodity of hair, send thee a beard. <laughs> By my troth, I'll tell thee I am almost sick for one. Well, I would not ever grow on my chin. Is thy lady within? Would not a pair of these have bread, sir? Yes, being kept together and put to use. I would play Lord Pandrus of Phrygia, sir, to bring a Cressida to this Troilus. I understand you, sir. It is well begged. My lady is within, sir. I will cast her to them once you come. Who you are and what you would are out of my welkin. I might say element, but the word is overworn. Save thee! Gentlemen. And you, sir. Dieu vous garde, monsieur. Et vous aussi, votre serviteur. I, I hope you are, sir, and I am yours. <clears throat> Will you encounter the house, sir? My niece is desirous that you should enter, if your trade be to her. I am bound to your niece, sir. I mean, she is the list of my voyage. Taste your legs, sir. Put them to motion. My legs do better understand me, sir, than I understand what you mean. <laughs> By bidding me taste my legs? I mean to go, sir. To enter. I shall answer you with gate and entrance. <laughs> but we are prevented. Most excellent, accomplished lady. The heavens rain odors on you. Rain odors? Whoa! <laughs> My matter hath no voice, lady, but to your own most pregnant and vouchsafed ear. Oh, it is pregnant, vouchsafed! Let the garden door be shut, and leave me to my hearing. <laughs> Give me your hand, sir. My duty, madam, and most humble service. What is your name? Cesario is your servant's name, fair princess. My servant, sir? T'was never merry world since lowly feigning was called compliment. You are servant to the Duke Orsino, you. And he is yours, and his must needs be yours. Your servant's servant is your servant, madam. <laughs> for him, I think not on him, for his thoughts. But they were blanks rather than filled with me. Madam, I come to whet your gentle thoughts on his behalf. Oh, by your leave, I pray you. I bow you never speak again of him. But would you undertake another suit? Oh, I had rather hear you to solicit that than music from the spheres. Dear lady. Give me leave, beseech you. I did send after the last enchantment you did here. A ring in chase of you, so did I abuse myself, my servant, and I fear me you. Under your hard construction must I sit, to force that on you in a shameful cunning, which you knew none of yours. What might you think? Have you not set mine honor at the stake, and 
baited it with all the unmuzzled thoughts that tear in his heart can think. To one of your receiving enough is shown. A window, not a bosom, hides my heart. So let me hear you speak. I pity you. Is that the degree to love? No, not a step. For it is a common proof that very oft we pity enemies. Why oh, then? Methinks it's time to smile again. Oh, world, how apt the poor are to be proud. The clock upbraids me with a waste of time. Be not afraid, good youth, I will not have you. And yet, when wit and youth is come to harvest, your wife is like to reap a proper man. There lies your way, do west. Then westward ho. Grace and good disposition attend your ladyship. You're nothing, madam, to my lord by me. Stay! I prithee, tell me what thou thinkst of me. If you do think you are not what you are. If I think so, I think the same of you. Then think you right. I am not what I am. <gasps> I would you were as I would have you be. Would it be better, madam, than I am? I wish it might. For now I am your fool. Oh! <laughs> what a deal of scorn looks beautiful in the contempted anger of his lip. A murderous guilt shows not itself more soon than love that would seem hid. Love's night is noon. Cesario, by the roses of the spring, by matehood, honor, truth, and everything, I love thee so that spite of all thy pride, nor wit, nor reason can my passion hide. To relax short thy reasons from this cause. For that I would, thou therefore hast no cause, but rather Reason thus with reason, better. Love sought is good, but given unsought is better. toward you. Will you make an ass of me? She did show favor to the youth in your sight only to exasperate you, to, to awake your dormouse valor, to put fire in your heart and brimstone in your liver. You should then have accosted her, and with some excellent jests, fire you from the mint, you should have banged the youth into dumbness. This was looked for at your hand, and this was balked. The double guilt of this opportunity, you let time wash off. And you are now sailed to the north of my lady's opinion, where you will hang like an icicle on a Dutchman's beard. Unless you do redeem it by some laudable attempt, either of valor or policy. Well, uh, if it be any way, it, it must be with valor, uh, because policy I hate. <laughs> <laughs> Why then? My fortunes upon the basis of valor. Challenge the Duke's youth 
to fight with him. Hurt him in 11 places. <laughs> My niece will take note of it and assure thyself there is no love broker in the world can more prevail in man's commendation with woman than report of valor. There is no way but this, Sir Andrew. Will either of you bear me a challenge to him? Go, write it in a martial hand. Be cursed and brief. It is no matter how witty, so it be eloquent and full of invention. Go about it. What? Taunt him with the license of ink. Go thou write with a goose pen, no matter about it. But where will I find you? We'll call thee at thy bedchamber. Go! Uh -oh. This is a dear mannequin to you, Sir Toby. I have been dear to him, lad, some. Two thousand strong or so. We shall have a rare letter from him, but you'll not deliver it. Never trust me then. And I'll stir on the Duke's youth to an answer. I think oxen and wain ropes cannot hail them together. For Andrew, if he were opened and you found so much blood in his liver as would clog the foot of a flea, <laughs> I'll eat the rest of the anatomy. <laughs> And it's opposite the youth bears in his visage no great presage of cruelty. <laughs> Toby! See where the youngest wren of mine comes. If you desire the spleen and will laugh yourself into stitches, follow me. Uh, He's in yellow stocking! <laughs> and cross garter. Most villainous <laughs> face into more lines than is in the new map with the augmentation of the Indies. You have not seen such a thing as this. Oh. Come, bring us, bring us where he is. <laughs> I would not, by my will, have troubled you. But since you make your pleasure of your pains, I will no further chide you. I could not stay behind you. My desire, more sharp than filet steel, did spur me forth, and not all love to see you. Though so much as might have drawn one to a longer voyage. But jealousy, what might befall your travel, being skillless in these parts, which to a stranger, unguided and unfriended, often prove rough and unhospitable. My willing love, the rather by these arguments of fear, set forth in your pursuit. My kind Antonio, I can no other answer make but thanks. And thanks, and ever thanks. And oft, good turns are shuffled off with such uncurrent pay. But were my worth, as is my conscience, firm, you should find better dealing. What's to do? Shall we go see the relics of this town? Tomorrow, sir, best first go see your lodging. I am not weary, and tis long tonight, I pray you. Let us satisfy our eyes with the memorials and the things of fame that do renown this city. Would you pardon me? I do not without danger walk these streets. Once in a sea fight against the Duke, his galleys, I did some service. Of such note, indeed, that were I tame here, it would scarce be answered. Do not then walk too open. It doth not fit me at all, sir. Here's my purse. In the south suburbs at the Elephant is best to lodge. I will bespeak our diet, whilst you beguile the time and feed your knowledge with viewing of the town. There shall you have me. Why I, your purse? Happily, your eyes shall light upon some toy you have desired to purchase, and your store, I think, is now for idle markets, sir? I'll be your purse bearer, <laughs> and leave you for an hour. To the elephant! I do remember. <laughs> I have sent after him. Oh, if he should come, how shall I feast him? What bestow of him? For you bought more often begged or borrowed. <laughs> <laughs> I speak too loud. Where's Malvolio? He is sad and civil and suits well for a sir. 
servant with my fortunes. Where's Malvolio? He is coming, madam, <laughs> but in very strange manner. He is sure possessed, madam. Why? What's the matter? Does he rave? Uh, no, madam, he does nothing but smile. <gasps> Your ladyship will best to have some guard about you if he come, for sure the man is tainted in his wits. Go, call him hither. I am as mad as he. If sad and merry madness equal be. <laughs> How now, Marvolio? Sweet lady. Ho, ho. Carlisle, <laughs> I sent for thee upon a sad occasion. Sad lady? I could be sad. <laughs> This does make some obstruction in the blood, this cross <laughs> But what of that? <laughs> if it please the Isle One, it is with me as a very true son it is. Please one and please all. Why, how dost thou, man? What is the matter with thee? Not black in my mind, though yellow in my legs. It did come to his hands, and command shall be executed. I think we do know the sweet Roman hand. Wilt thou go to bed, Marvolio? To bed? Mm. <laughs> oh, I, sweetheart, and I'll come to thee. Oh, God, comfort thee. Why dost thou smile so and kiss thy hand so oft? How do you, Malvolio? Your request. Why? Ridiculous boldness before my lady. Be not afraid of greatness. Oh, twas well written. What meanest thou by that, Marvolio? Some are born great, oh, some achieve greatness. What sayest thou? And some have greatness thrust upon me. Oh, Remember who commended thy yellow stockings? Thy yellow stockings. And wish to see the cross guard. Cross guard. Why, this is very midsummer madness. Madness. <laughs> The young gentleman of the Duke Orsino's is returned. I could hardly entreat him back. He attends your ladyship's pleasure. I'll come to him. Good Mariah, let this fellow be looked to. Where's my cousin Toby? Let some of my people have a special care of him. I would not have him miscarry for the half my dowry. Oh. 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 Do you come near me now? No worse man than Sir Toby to look to me. This concurs directly with the letter. She sent him on purpose that I may appear stubborn to him. For she incites me to that in the letter. Oh, I have snared her. And when she went away now, let this fellow be looked to. Fellow? Not my lonely or after my degree, but fellow. Why, everything is here together that no drama, no scruple, no obstacle, no what can be said. Nothing that can be can come between me and the full prospect of my hopes. Well, Jove, not I, is the doer of this, and he is to be thanked. Do you not see, you 
move him? Let me alone with him. <laughs> Why? How now? My poor cock. How dost thou chuck? Sir? I bid thee come with me. What, man? Tis not for gravity to play at cherry pits with Satan. Go hang yourselves all. <laughs> you are idle, shallow things. I am not of your element. You shall know more hereafter. <laughs> Aha. <laughs> Possible? If this were played upon a stage now, I could condemn it as an improbable fiction. <laughs> His very genius hath taken the infection of the device, man. <laughs> Nay, pursue him now, lest the device take air and taste. Why, we shall make him mad indeed. The house will be the quieter. <laughs> Come. We'll have him in a dark room. And bow. My niece is already in the belief that he's mad. We may carry it thus for our pleasure. <laughs> and his penance till our very pastime, tired out of breath, prompt us to have mercy on him. At which time we'll bring the device to the bar and crown thee for a finder of madmen. <laughs> But see, but see. More matter for a May morning. But here's the challenge. Uh, Read it. I warrant there's vinegar and pepper in it. Is it so saucy? I is. I warrant him do but read. Me, me. You, whatsoever thou art, thou art but a scurvy fellow. Good and valiant. Wonder not, nor admire not in thy mind why I do call thee so, for I will show thee. No reason for it. A good note. This keeps you from the blow of the law. <laughs> thou comes to the Lady Olivia, and in my sight she uses thee kindly. But thou liest in thy throat. That is not the matter I challenge thee for. <clears throat> Very brief, and to exceeding good sense. Less. I will waylay thee going home, if it be thy chance to kill me. Good. Thou killst me like a rogue and a villain. Still you keep on the windy side of the law. It's good. Bear thee well, and God have mercy upon one of our souls. <laughs> he may have mercy upon mine, but my hope is better, and so look to thyself, thy friend. <laughs> as thou usest him, and thy sworn enemy, Andrew Aitchik. Well, if this letter move him not, his legs cannot. I'll give it him. You may have very fit occasion for it. He is now in some commerce with my lady and will by and by depart. Go, Sir Andrew. Scout me for him at the corner of the orchard like a bum bailey. So soon as ever thou seest him, draw. draw. And as thou drawest, swear horrible. Nay, let me alone for swearing. And slight, slid, swoon. <laughs> now will not I deliver this letter. The behavior of the young gentleman gives him out to be of good capacity and breeding. Therefore, this letter being so excellently ignorant <laughs> would breed no terror in him. He will find that it comes from a clodpole. <laughs> but, sir, I will deliver his challenge by word of mouth. Set upon ague cheek a notable valor and drive the youth into a most hideous opinion of his rage, skill, fury, and impetuosity. <laughs> this will so affright them both that they will kill one another by the look. <laughs> like basilisks. Here he comes with your niece. Give them way till he take leave and presently after them. I will meditate the while upon some horrid message for a child. I've sent much unto a heart of stone. 
and laid mine honor too on cherry on it. What shall you ask of me that I'll deny? Nothing but this, your true love for my master. How with mine honor may I give him that which I had given to you? I will acquit you. <laughs> well, come again tomorrow. Fare you well. A fiend like thee might bear my soul to hell. Gentlemen, God save thee. And you, sir. That defense thou hast, betake thee to it. Of what nature the wrongs are thou hast done him, I know not. But thy interceptor, full of despite, bloody as the hunter, attends thee at the orchard end. Draw thy sword, be prompt in thy preparation, for thy assailant is quick, skillful, and deadly. You mistake, sir. I am sure no man hath any quarrel to me. My remembrance is very free and clear of any image of offense done to any man. You will find it otherwise. <laughs> I assure you. <laughs> Therefore, if you hold your life at any price, betake you to your God, ah! for your opposite hath in him what youth, strength, skill, and wrath can furnish man with all. I pray you, sir, what is he? He is a knight, dubbed with unhatched rapier, but he is a devil in private brawls, souls and bodies, hath he divorced three. And his incensement at this moment is so implacable that satisfaction can be none but by pangs of death and sepulchre. I beseech you, do me this courteous office as to know of the night what my offense to him is. It is something of my negligence, nothing of my purpose. I will do it. Yeah. Signor Fabian, stay you by this gentleman till my return. Pray you, sir, do you know of this matter? I know the knight is incensed against you, even to a mortal arbitrament, but nothing of the circumstance more. I beseech you, what manner of a man is he? He is indeed, sir, the most skillful, bloody, and fatal opposite you could possibly have found in any part of Illyria. <laughs> Will you walk towards him? I'll make your peace with him, if I can. I shall be much bound to you for it. I am one that I'd rather go with Sir Priest then, Sir Knight, I care not who knows so much of my metal. My man, he's a very devil. I have not seen such a virago. I had a pass with him. Rapier, scabbard, and all, and he gives me the stucking with such a mortal motion that it is inevitable. They say he has been fencer to the Sophie. Well, clocks on it. Uh, I'll not meddle with him. I didn't <laughs> still not, and I'll be pacified. Fabian can scarce hold him yonder. A little let the matter slip. I, I'll give him my horse <laughs> for a cabinet. I'll make the motion. Stand here. Uh, make a good show on it. It shall end without the perdition of souls. I have his horse to make up the quarrel. I have persuaded him the youth's a devil. He is as horribly conceited of him. And he finds that now to be scarce worth speaking of. Therefore, draw for the supportance of his vow. He protests he will not hurt you. May God defend me. A little thing would make me tell them how much I lack the man. Give crown if you see him furious. Come, Sir Andrew, there's no remedy the gentleman will for his honor's sake have one bout with you. He cannot, by the rules of combat, avoid it. But. He has promised me, as he is a gentleman and a soldier, he will not hurt you. Now, come on. <laughs> Pray God he keep his all to it. I do assure you it is against my will. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, come on. That's it.
gentlemen have done offence, I take the fault on me. If you offend him, I for him defy you. <laughs> His love bears yet do more than you have heard him brag to you, he will. Nay, then, if, <laughs> if you be a meddler, I am for you. Good sir, Toby, hold! Put the officers! I'll be with you and now. But you <laughs> 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 This is the man to thy office. Antonio, I arrest thee at the suit of Duke Orsino. You do mistake me, sir. No, sir, no jot. I know your favor well. Though now you have no sea cap on your head. <laughs> Take him away. He knows I know him well. I must obey. This comes with seeking you. If there's no remedy, I shall answer it. What will you do? Now my necessity makes me to ask you for my purse. <laughs> it grieves me much more for what I cannot do for you than what befalls myself. You stand amazed, but be of comfort. Come, sir, away. I must entreat of you some of that money. What money, sir? For the fair kindness you have showed me here, in part being prompted by your present trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Out of my lean and low ability, I'll lend you something. My having is not much. I'll make division of my present with you. Hold, here's half my coffer. Will you deny me? Now? Is it possible that my deserts to you can lack persuasion? Do not tempt my misery, lest that it make me so unsound a man as to upbraid you with those kindnesses that I have done for you. I know of none, nor know I you by voice or any feature. Come, sir, I pray you, Let me speak you, a little. This youth that you see here, I snatched one half out of the jaws of death, relieved him with such sanctity of love, and to his image, which methought did promise most venerable worth, did I devotion. What's that to us? The time goes by, away! But oh, how vile an idol proves this guy. <laughs> oh, hast Sebastian done good feature, shake. In nature, there's no blemish but the mind. None can be called deformed, but the unkind. Virtue is beauty, but the beauty is evil. Our empty trunks are flourished by the devil. The man grows mad. Away with him. Come. Come, sir. Lead me on. Methinks his words do from such passion fly that he believes himself. So do not I. <coughs> prove true imagination, oh, prove true that I, dear brother, be now tamed for you. Come hither, knight. Come hither, Fabian. He named Sebastian. I, my brother, know, yet living in my glass. Even such and so in favor was my brother. And he went still in this fashion. Color, ornament for him I imitate. Oh, if it prove tempests are kind and salt waves fresh in love. A very dishonest, paltry boy. And more a coward than a hare. <laughs> his dishonesty lies in leaving his friend here in necessity. 
and denying him for his cowardship. Ah, uh, Fabian. A coward. A most devout coward. Religious in it. Uh, slight. I, I laughed after him again and beat him. Do! Cuff him soundly, <laughs> but never draw thy sword. I do not! No, not. Come, let's see the event. I dare lay any money, it will be nothing yet. <laughs> Go to! Thou art a foolish fellow. <laughs> Let me be clear of thee. Well held out, if faith. No, I do not know you. Nor I am not sent to you by my lady to bid you come speak with her. Nor your name is not Master Cesario. Nor this is not my nose, neither. Nothing that is so is so. I prithee, vent thy folly somewhere else. Thou knowest not me. Vent my folly. He has heard that word of some great man and now applies it to a fool. <laughs> Vent to my folly. <laughs> I prithee now, ungird thy strangeness, and tell me what I shall vent to my lady. Shall I vent to her that thou art coming? I prithee, foolish Greek, depart from me. There's money for thee. If you tarry longer, I shall give worse pain. <laughs> no, sir! Ah, ha! <laughs> I met you again. That was for you. <laughs> <laughs> Why, there's for me. Uh, <laughs> and there's. Uh, <laughs> but. And there. Oh, and there. Uh, Are all the people mad? No! Oh, sir. Well, I'll throw you over the house. Oh, this is what I tell my lady straight. I would not be in some of your coats for tuppets. Thus to dream, still let me sleep. Nay, come, I prithee. Would thou wouldst be ruled by me? Madam, I will. <laughs> Thank you. 
Sasha Topaz the curate. Well, I'll put it on, and I will dissemble myself in it. And I would I were the first that ever dissembled in such a gown. Joe, bless me, Master Parson. Say amen, Sir Toby. Amen. Do <laughs> it, Sir Topaz. What ho, I say? Peace in this prison. Who calls there? Sir Topaz, the curate, who comes to visit Malvolio, the lunatic. <laughs> Sir Topaz, Sir Topaz, go to my lady. How hyperbolical fiend, how vexest thou this man? <sighs> Talks thou nothing but a lady? Well said, Master Parsons. Sir Topaz, never was man thus wrong. Good Sir Topaz, do not think I am mad. They have put me here in hideous darkness. Sigh, thou dishonest Satan. No. Sayest thou that the house is dark? As hell, Sir Topaz. Why, it hath bay windows. No. Transparent as stone walls. And the clerestories toward the south north are as lustrous as Albany. Oh, and yet complaints thou of obstruction. I am not mad, Sir Topaz. I say to you, this house is dark. Madman thou errest. I say there is no darkness but ignorance, oh. in which thou art more puzzled than the Egyptians in their fog. And I say this house is as dark as ignorance, or ignorance was as dark as hell. And I say there was never man thus abused. I am no more mad than you are. Make trial of it, and then he comes to question. What is the opinion of Pythagoras uh, concerning wild fowl? Oh, uh, that the soul of our granddam might perchance inhabit a bird. What thinks thou of his opinion? Oh, I think nobly of the soul, and no way of proof his opinion. Fare thee well! Remain now still in darkness. No. Thou shalt hold the opinion of Pythagoras, ere Just... I will allow thy wits, and fear to kill a woodcock. No, Sir Topaz. Thou dispossess the soul of thy grand am. Fare thee well! Sir Topaz! Sir Topaz! <laughs> <laughs> For all waters! I might have done this without thy beard and gown. He sees me not. To him, in thine own voice, bring me word how thou findst him. I would we were well rid of this knavery. If he may be conveniently delivered, I would he were. For I am so far in offense with my niece that I cannot pursue with any safety this sport to the upshot. Come by and by to my chamber. Hey, Robin, jolly Robin. Tell me how thy lady does. Fool. My lady is unkind. Fool. Alas, why is she so? Fool, I say. She loves another who calls her. Good fool. Good fool. As ever thou wilt deserve well at my hand. Help me to a candle and pen, ink, and paper. As I am a gentleman, I will live to be thankful to thee for it. Master Melvoria? I could fool. Alas, sir, how fell you beside your five wits? Fool, never was man so notoriously abused. I am as well in my wits fool as thou art. But as well? Then you are mad indeed, if you be no better in your wits than a fool. I tell thee I am as well in my wits as any man in Illyria. Well, a day that you were, sir. By this hand I am. Good fool, some light, ink, paper. And convey what I will set down to my lady. It shall advantage thee more than ever the bearing of letter did. I will help you to it. Oh, good fool, prithee be gone. be gone. I am gone, sir, and anon, sir, I'll be with you again in a trice. Like to the old vice, your need to sustain. Who with dagger of laugh in his rage and his wrath cries, Ah, to the devil like a mad lad. <coughs> Pare thy nails, dear. Adieu, good man, devil!
This is the air. That is the glorious sun. This pearl she gave me, I do feel it and see it. And though it is wonder that enwraps me thus, yet tis not madness. Where's Antonio then? I could not find him at the elephant. Yet there he was, and there I found this credit that he did range the town to seek me out. His counsel now might do me golden service. For though my soul concurs here with my sense that this may be some error, <laughs> but no madness, yet doth this accident and flood of fortune so far exceed all instance, all discourse, that I am ready to distrust mine eyes and wrangle with my reason that persuades me to any other trust but that I am mad. Or else the lady's mad. <laughs> Yet if twere so, she could not sway her house, command her followers, take and give back affairs and their dispatch with such a smooth, discreet, and stable bearing as I perceive she does. <laughs> There's something in it that is deceivable. <laughs> but here the lady comes. good man, and go with you. And having sworn truth, ever will be true. Then lead the way, good father, and heaven so shine that they may fairly note this act of mine. <laughs> As thou lovest me, let me see his letter. Good Master Fabian, grant me another request. Anything. Do not desire to see this letter. <laughs> well, this is to give a dog, and in recompense, desire my dog again. Belong you to the lady Olivia friends. Aye, sir, we are some of her trappings. I know thee well. How dost thou, my good fellow? Truly, sir, the better for my foes and the worse for my friends. Just the contrary, the better for thy friends. No, sir, the worse. How can that be? Mary, sir, they praise me and make an ass of me. Now, my foes tell me plainly I am an ass, so that by my foes, sir, I profit in the knowledge of myself, and by my friends I am abused. Why, this is excellent. By my tilt, sir, no, though it please you to be one of my friends. Thou shalt not be the worse for me. There's gold. But that it would be double dealing. I wonder you could make it another. Give me ill counsel. Put your grace in your pocket, sir, for this once, and let your flesh and blood obey. Well, I will be so much a sinner to be a double dealer. There's another. If you will let your lady know that I am here to speak with her and bring her along with you, it may awake my bounty further. Mary, sir, let your bounty take a nap till I come again. <laughs> I will awake it or not. Here comes the man, sir, that did rescue me. 
That face of his I do remember well. Yet when I saw it last, it was besmeared as black as Vulcan in the smoke of war. What's the matter? Oh, Sino, this is that Antonio that took the phoenix and her freight from Candy. And this is he that did the tiger board. When your young nephew Titus lost his leg, here in the streets, desperate of shame and state, in private brabble did we apprehend him. He did me kindness, sir, drew on my side. Notable pirate. Thou salt water thief. What foolish boldness has brought thee to their mercies, whom thou in turn so bloody and so dear has made thine enemies? Or say no. Noble, sir. Be pleased that I shake off these names you give me. Antonio never yet was thief or pirate, though I confess on base I'm ground enough for Sino's enemy. The witchcraft drew me hither, that most ingrateful boy there by your side. From the rude seas enraged and foamy mouth did I redeem. A wreck past hope he was, his life I gave him, and did there to add my love without retention or restraint drew to defend him when he was beset, where being apprehended, his false cunning, not meaning to partake with me in danger, taught him to face me out of his acquaintance and grew a twenty years removed thing while one would wink. Denied me my own purse, which I had recommended to his use not half an hour before. How can this be? When came he to this town? Today, my lord. And for three months before, no interim, not a minute's vacancy. Both day and night did we keep company. Here comes the Countess. Now heaven walks on earth. <laughs> but for thee, fellow, fellow, thy words are madness. <laughs> Three months this youth hath tended upon me. But more of that anon. Take him aside. What would, my lord? But that he may not have, or an Olivia may seem serviceable. <laughs> Cesario, you do not keep promise with me. Madam? Gracious, so Olivia. What do you say, Cesario? Good, my lord. My lord would speak. My duty hushes me. If it be aught to the old tune, my lord, it is as fat and falsome to my nearest howling after music. Still so cruel. Still so constant, lord. What, to perverseness? You uncivil lady, to whose ingrate and unauspicious altars my soul, the faithfulest offerings, hath breathed out that air devotion tendered. What shall I do? Even what it please, my lord, that shall become him. Why should I not? Had I the heart to do it? Like to the Egyptian thief at point of death, kill what I love. Their savage jealousy that sometimes savors nobly. But hear me this. Since you, to non-regardance, cast my faith, and that I partly know the instrument that screws me from my true place in your favor. Live you the marble-breasted tyrant still. But this, your darling, whom I know you love, and whom by heaven I swear, I tender dearly. Him will I tear out of that cruel eye where he sits crowned in his master's spite. Come, boy, with me. My thoughts are ripe in mischief. I'll sacrifice the land that I do love to spite a raven's heart within a dove. And I, most jocund, apt, and willingly to do you rest, a thousand deaths would die. <gasps> Where goes Cesario? And after him I love, more than I love these eyes, more than my life, more by all mores than dare I shall love wife. Ay me! <laughs> Justin, how am I beguiled? Who does beguile you? Who does do you wrong? Hast thou forgot thyself? Is it so long? Call forth the Holy Father. Come away. Whither, my lord? Cesario. Husband, stay! Ha <laughs> ha
baseness of thy fear that makes thee strangle thy propriety. Fear it not, Cesario, take thy fortunes up. Be that thou knowest thou art, and then thou art as great as that thou fearest. Welcome, Father, Father, I charge thee by thy reverence here to unfold what thou alone dost know hath newly passed between this youth and me. A contract of eternal bond of love. Confirmed by mutual joinder of your hands, attested by the holy close of lips, strengthened by the interchangement of your rings, and all the ceremony of this compact, sealed in my function by my testimony. Since when my watch hath told me, toward my grave I have traveled but two hours. Oh, thou dissembling come! What will thou be when time hath so to grizzle on thy case? Though will not else thy craft so quickly grow that thine own trip shall be thy overthrow. Farewell, and take her. But direct thy feet where thou and I henceforth may never meet. My lord, I do protest. Oh, do not swear. Hold little faith, though thou hast too much fear. For the love of God, a surgeon, send one presently to Sir Toby. What's the matter? He broke my head across. He's given Sir Toby a bloody coxcomb. Who has done this, Sir Andrew? The Duke's gentleman, one Cesario. And we, we took him for a coward, but he's the very devil incarnate. My gentleman, Cesario? He <laughs> broke my head for nothing. That that I did, I was set on to do it by Sir Toby. Why do you speak to me? I never hurt you. You, you drew your sword upon me without cause, but I bespake you fair. You a bloody coat, Scorpio, you heard you have heard me. There comes Toby now, halting. You shall hear more if he'd not been in drink. He would have tickled you other gates than he did. Ah, now, gentlemen, how's it with you? <laughs> <laughs> That's all one. He has hurt me. And there's an end to it. Such. Did see Dick Surgeon, sir? Oh, he's drunk, Sir Toby. An hour gone. His eyes were set at eight of the morning. Then he's a rogue and a dull brain ballad. I hate a drunken rogue. <laughs> Away with him! Who hath made this havoc with them? I, I, I'll help you, Sir Toby, because then we'll be dressed together. <laughs> Will you? Help an ass head, a coxcomb, a knave, a thin faced knave, a gull. Get him to bed and let his hurt be looked to. I'm sorry, madam. I've hurt your kinsman. But had it been the brother of my blood, I must have done no less with wit and safety. <laughs> you throw a strange regard upon me. And by that I do perceive it hath offended you. Pardon me, sweet one, even for the vows we made each other but so late ago. One face, one voice, one habit, and two persons. A natural perspective, that is and is not. Antonio. Oh, my dear Antonio. How have the hours racked and tortured me since I have lost thee? <laughs> Sebastian, are you? Doubt that, Antonio? How have you made division of yourself? <laughs> the knuckle cleft in two is not more twin than these two creatures, which is Sebastian. Most wonderful! <laughs> I never had a brother, nor can there be that deity in my nature of here and everywhere. I had a sister, 
whom the blind waves and surges have devoured. Of charity, what kin are you to me? What countryman? What name? What parentage? Of Messaline. Sebastian was my father, such as Sebastian was my brother, too. So went he suited to his watery tomb. If spirits can assume both form and suit, you come to fright us. The spirit I am, indeed, but am in that dimension grossly clad, which from the womb I did participate. Were you a woman, as the rest goes even, I should my tears let fall upon your cheek and say, Thrice welcome, drowned Viola. My father had a mole upon his brow. And so had mine. And died that day when Viola from her birth had numbered 13 years. Oh, that record is lively in my soul. He finished indeed his mortal act that day that made my sister 13 years. If nothing lets to make us happy both but this, my masculine usurped attire, do not embrace me till each circumstance of place, time, fortune do cohere and jump that I am violent. <laughs> Which to confirm, I'll bring you to a captain in this town where lie my maiden weeds by whose gentle help I was preserved to serve this noble duke. All the occurrence of my fortune since have been between this lady and this lord. <laughs> so, comes it, lady. You have been mistook. <laughs> but nature, to her bias, drew in that. You would have been contracted to a maid. <laughs> if this be so, as yet the glass seems true, I shall have share in this most happy reign. Boy, thou hast said to me a thousand times, thou never shouldst love woman like to me. And all those sayings will I overswear, and all those swearings keep as true in soul as doth that orbit continent the fire that severs day from night. Give me thy hand. Let me see thee in thy woman's weeds. <laughs> the captain that did bring me first on shore hath my maid's garments. He upon some action is now in prison at Malvolio's suit. He shall enlarge him. Fetch Malvolio hither. Yet alas, now I remember me. They say, poor gentleman, he's much distract. A most extracting frenzy of mine own for my remembrance. Clearly banished is. How does he, sir? Truly, madam. He holds Beelzebub at the stave's end, as well as the man in his case may do. Has he written a letter to you? I should have given it you today morning, but as a madman's epistles are no gospels, so it skills not much when they are delivered. Open it and read it. Look then to be well edified when the fool delivers the madman. <laughs> I do but read madness. And your ladyship will have it as it ought to be. You must allow vox. Prithee, read it thy right wits. So I do, Madonna, but to read his right wits is to read thus. Therefore, prepend, my princess, and give ear. <laughs> read it, you sir. By the Lord, madam, you wrong me, and the world shall know it. Though you have put me into darkness, and given your drunken cousin rule over me, yet have I the benefit of my senses as well as your ladyship. I have your own letter that induced me to the semblance I put on, with the which I doubt not but to do myself much right, or you much shame. Think of me as you please. 
I leave my duty a little unthought of and speak out of my injury, the madly used Malvolio. Did he write this? Aye, madam. This saber's not much of distraction. See him delivered, Fabian. Bring him hither. My lord, so please you, these things further thought on, to think me as well a sister as a wife, one day shall crown the alliance on it, so please you, here at my house, and at my proper cost. Madam, I am most apt to embrace your offer. Your master quits you. <laughs> Master quits you. <laughs> For your service done him, so much against the metal of your sex, so far beneath your soft and tender breeding, and since you called me master for so long, here is my hand. You shall from this time be your master's mistress. Aye, sister, you are she. Madam! Is this the madman? Ah, oh, my lord, the same. How now, Malvolio? Madam, you have done me wrong. <laughs> Notorious wrong. Have I, Malvolio? No! Lady, you have! Pray you peruse that letter. You must not now deny it is your hand, or say it is not your seal, nor your invention. You can say none of this. But grant it then, and tell me in the modesty of honor, why you have given me such clear lights of favor? Dad, we come smiling and cross guarded to you to put on yellow stockings and to frown upon Sir Toby and the light of you. And after you this is an obedient home. Why have you suffered me to be imprisoned? Kept in a dark house, visited by the priest, and made the most notorious gift and gall that air invention played on. Tell me, why? Alas, Malvolio, this is not my writing. Though I confess much like the character, but out of question, tis Mariah's hand. And now I do bethink me. But for she first told me thou wast mad. Oh, prithee be content. This practice hath most shrewdly passed upon thee, but will know the grounds and authors of it. Thou shalt be both the plaintiff and judge of thine own cause. Good madam, hear me speak, and let no quarrel nor no brawl to come taint the condition of this present hour, which I have wondered at, in hope it shall not. Most freely I confess myself and Toby set this device against Malvolio here. Upon some stubborn and uncourteous part we had conceived against him. Mariah writ the letter at Sir Toby's great importance, in recompense whereof he hath married her. How with a sportful malice it was followed may rather pluck on laughter than revenge, if that the injuries be justly weighed that have on both sides passed. Alas, poor fool, how have they baffled thee? Why, some are born great, some achieve greatness, some have greatness thrown upon them. I was one, sir, in this interlude. One, sir, topaz, sir. But that's all one. <laughs> By the Lord, fool, I am not man. But do you remember? Madam, why laugh you at such a barren rascal? And you smile not, he's gad. And thus, the whirly gig of time brings in his revenges. <laughs> 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 I'll be revenge on the whole pack. He has been most notoriously abused. Pursue him and entreat him to a peace. He hath not told us of the captain yet. When that is known, and golden time convince, a solemn combination shall be made of our dear souls. 
Meantime, sweet sister, we will not part from hence. Cesario, come. Or so you shall be while you are a man. But when in other habits you are seen, Orsino's mistress and his fancy's queen. When that I was, and the little tiny boy, with hey-ho, the wind and the rain, a foolish thing was but a toy. For the rain, it raineth every day. I came to man's estate with hey-ho, the wind and the rain. Against knaves and thieves, men shut their gate. For the rain, it raineth every day. I came my last to wife with hey-ho, the wind and the rain. By swaggering, could I never thrive? For the rain, it raineth every day. But when I came unto my beds with hey-ho, the wind and the rain, with toss pots still had drunken heads. For the rain, it raineth every day. A great while ago, the world begun with hey-ho, the wind and the rain. But that's all one, our play is done. And we'll strive to please you every day. Live from Lincoln Center, this has been Shakespeare's Twelfth Night, a production of the Lincoln Center Theater, coming to you from the stage of the Vivian Beaumont Theater here at New York City's Lincoln Center for the Performing Arts. Our entire ensemble on stage receiving the applause and the cheers of our audience here at the Vivian Beaumont Theater. The Lords and Ladies. Kevin Daniels, Adam Danheiser, John Michael Gilbert, Matty Ocean, Kim Awan, Ryan Dunn, and Robin Weiger. The musicians, Kimberly Grigsby, Marshall Coyd, Norbert Goldberg, Anik Ulyanin, Stephen Silverstein, and Mark Stewart. That was Julio Monte as Antonio. 
Mariah and Fabian, Amy Hill and Skip Suddeth. David Patrick Kelly was Festa. Sir Toby Belch and Sir Andrew Aguecheek, Brian Murray and Max Wright. Sebastian and Olivia, Rick Steer and Kira Sedgwick. Malvolio in the person of Philip Bosco. And now Orsino and Viola, Paul Rudd and Helen Hunt. And once again, here is our entire ensemble. I'm Beverly Sills. Thank you for joining us for this Live from Lincoln Center telecast. Be sure to tune in for our next program, the Chamber Music Society of Lincoln Center 30th Anniversary Gala. Check your local PBS station for time and date. I'll see you there. from Lincoln Center was made possible by a major grant from MetLife, the company that helps you make sense of it all, and on behalf of MetLife's affiliate, New England Financial. This program was also made possible by grants from the Robert Wood Johnson Jr. Charitable Trust, Thomas H. Lee and Ann Tenenbaum, the Irene Diamond Fund, the Lou Esther T. Mertz Charitable Trust, the Fan Fox and Leslie R. Samuels Foundation, and the National Endowment for the Arts. This is PBS.